Hey traders, this is Greg. Uh, once again, we're doing our weekly uh, S&P 500 update. So today is March 6, 2023. Um, one thing I want to just do some housekeeping is that next week I'm off, so I won't be able to do an update. I might try, but I can't promise anything where I'm going. I don't even know. Oh, it says they'll have internet. I'm not so sure. Plus, I won't have a full computer set up. Um, well, that being said, um, I hope I get to put something up at least just to let you guys know I didn't forget about you. Um, anyway, so to get moving, uh, today uh, we'll talk about this upcoming week and this last week in the S&P 500 as normally I like to use the SPY as my proxy. Um, I always like to throw in, a, if you're watching this on TradingView, give me a follow and then a boost or whatever. Um, and more importantly, on YouTube, if you it, they link to YouTube, if you uh, do follow me on YouTube or uh, do find this on YouTube, please uh, subscribe and like it there as well. Helps me get a gauge about where I'm at with people following me. I don't make any money on this. I draw the charts for my own personal reasons because I do my own investing. On that note, I'm not a professional investor or certified anything. So um, this is stuff I've learned through the community. Um, through different chat communities, um, through other investors. Um, I also do some real estate investing. So that being said, let's jump right into it. Um, so again, I tell you this every time. You can see my screen. It's neat that it kind of blurs when I do this. The problem is on when I go to different charts, you can't see me. I don't know that you want to see me anyway, right? So let's start this time uh, like we normally do on the monthly. Uh, one thing I want to put out is put is... Now that we've gotten through February, we can take a look at what does that mean, right? Well, just to remind everybody about my monthly charts, most of my charts anyway, the large white uh, channel is pre-COVID. This is COVID here, this big drop. And then I fibbed out the blow off top when we had the run up. And then, you know, we, uh, we obviously retraced quite a bit over uh, 2022 um ending at the lowest point in october right about the 50 percent retracement if you're a fib person that actually lines up pretty good with a lot of stuff I'm, i have going on that being said um we're playing with the rooftop here as i like to call this pattern um we came down at 2023 we bounced uh this blue line is the 50 uh moving average so we all bounced on that we bounced on top of the covid and we bounced at the 50 percent line so a lot of uh support there obviously um to be had uh and then we moved back up we played a little chop um the interesting month of february um well we remember we had a big january it looked like we were taken off this year then February gave us a little dose of reality. Um, at first, I thought that was a reversal candle. Now, candles and monthlies are, you know, I don't know. I, people have different thoughts on that. But I did see it also bounce off of this trend line. So I said, well, let's see what happens in March. Now, we're only um, a few days into March, but we uh, are been doing pretty good already. When I say a few days, what did I say? The 6th? Yeah, the 6th. So um, on a monthly, this chart to me looks like a bounce, um, potential retest of uh, the trend line, and whoops, now an advancement. When I look at the momentum indicators, you know, it does look like it's coming up. We've, we've got back to our, our RSI as we reached the moving average. Our MACD was looking kind of bad, but now it's looking like it might be curling. I call it duck billing when it does this. Um, and we are still above the histogram, uh, so that also does put us in an uptrend, which is, you know, if you go back, it's been a long time since we were in a real technical downtrend um, on a monthly anyway. So that's my, uh, that's my view on the monthly charts. Jumping over to the weekly, this one is one of my more favorite. Again, here's our COVID channel, um, our pre-COVID channel. Here's COVID. I fibbed it. Same thing I did on the monthly, but this is a weekly, so we get more candles. And I did anchor an AVWAP uh, to the, at the beginning of the year. Um, so one thing I'll note is we had our blow off top channel. Um, we had a pretty good expanding wedge going, and then we caught a bunch of support. And if you look at kind of where that happened again, that 50%, we get into that October timeframe, and then we started trending up. 
And even if you look at the momentum indicators here, you see on the RSI and the MAC, they very they look kind of strong to me for a weekly, honestly. Um, you know, we've got some room to go. We can ride up high for a while if we want to. Um, this MACD is just getting partying here. Uh, still having scaling problems. I've had that for a while. With Usually if I just switch to a different ticker and back, see how that kind of made the scaling come in better. So we're coming out of this downtrend into a technical uptrend now. Um, and then we fought this AV wap uh, for a while. And it looks like this is today's candle. I get, I, I'm sorry, I'm a little late publishing this today. I had, a, I'm doing a real estate deal too today. Um, a whole bunch of stuff went sideways on that that I had to take care of immediately this morning, or at least attempt to, I hope it's taken care of. Anyway, so this is an active candle. This is Friday's candle. That's a pretty strong candle um, right here. And it helped probably push it above, you know, jumped over this AV wap. So really what's going to happen next is it'll be interesting to see if we run up, retest the AV wap, or maybe break down, retest this trend line. Um, right now, based on momentum, I'm, it looks like up yet to me. That being said, we'll get into some news later what uh, what's going on for news during the week there's a lot of ways to break a technical pattern with news uh flip into a daily same thing this one looks crazy when i zoom out because it's a it's a lot of candles this is an actual working chart that i do trade my spy on um covid channel uh covid lows here i took the fib out because it was just got too busy um the downtrend of 2022, I followed pretty closely. A um, couple throwovers. Um, thought this was going to be a throwover, and bear with the trading view catching up with me. Um, again, these are dailies. So we thought this might be a throwover, but we got over that AV wrap again. We got over all these moving averages, all of them. And um, just today, over the AV wrap again. So. Uh, this pennant played out, well, we'll see. It should probably get all the way back to, to the 415. But so when I look at momentum indicators on a daily on the SPY, I'm also seeing some reversal. This could easily reverse. Um, we're going to just see uh, on a daily anyway. Jump down to a five minute. Um, normally, I don't go over these in great detail uh, because it's just the intraday stuff. But uh, pretty overbought right now. So we'll see if we get some sort of a uh, pullback uh, today yet, too. And I bring that up because of where this candle particularly, bear with me, is um, right now we're pretty far off of this AV wrap. Um, so, all right, let's keep moving. Let's jump into IEF LQD. Now, this is uh, the signs of financial conditions of the market. There's several ways to measure this. There's uh, the Cleveland Fed. All the, There's a whole bunch of different ways. Uh, I've been sticking with the IEF LQD ratio. Um, I invert it. So the uh, red bars actually go up and the green bars go down. That being said, I do that because this green line is the S&P 500 that I overlay it. It's actually the SPIX. One of the times I probably should flip it to the SPY to stay consistent. But it's actually the SPIX, which is the, the cash market. Um, you can see how it follows financial conditions quite closely. As financial conditions ease as they did much of uh, you know, this period, the S&P 500 also did as well. And then we had a bunch of hawkish Fed talk recently that really brought down, made it tighten. And you can see the S&P 500, again, the green line, also dropped significantly. Now, again, these are all dailies. Look what's happened. This is reversed. So we got financial conditions starting to ease again, um, which I just find odd based on, um, you know, the, the FOMC does not want that. They, the Feds want... The, they want tight, tightening conditions um, to reel in the market. So that being said, this ain't going the way they want, which is a great segue for me to jump into this. So this is the uh, FedWatch tool, and that predicts future rate increases. And what that affects is car loans, auto loans, expansions of buying uh, or, or 
high beta companies um, that that borrow, you know, to grow. So big growth companies, tech companies, good example. Um, interesting thing, when when I looked this morning, this this chart significantly changed from this is the this is the likelihood of a twenty five basis rate hike March twenty third. Um, and this is a 50, right? And so we've watched now the 25, the likelihood of a 25 basis point rate hike drop somewhat significantly since last week. I thought it was in the 70s, even high 70s for a while. Um, and the 50 going up. So that should tighten financial conditions. It shouldn't ease them. So we got to keep a close eye on what's going on. You can compare with this chart, like just historically, the days before. Um, one of the things I like to look at is the probabilities. Um, oops, zoomed in a little too far. And that really is showing one, two, three rate hikes, maybe a pause. I've seen some various iterations of this change, like over the weekend even, um, where it looks like we're going to keep hiking uh, into 2020, up to 2024 before we start seeing cuts, uh, if you believe this. And these aren't too inaccurate. Um, I've seen them only once have I really seen a change really fast, and it was after a Powell Howell, which is Jerome Powell of the FOMC, the FOMC chair, um, got out and really started jawboning one time. Um, and I literally saw this chart move dramatically in a day. Um, and reprice in uh, the rate hikes, which ended up just creating a dip that got bought back up. I'm just baffled by that. Okay, so that, um, well, we're going to skip earnings. There's not a lot going on. Seeing if you're into that, that's this morning after market close. A little bit more. Again, I don't go into earnings too much in here. Fear and greed, we slipped back into greed. We were dead neutral at the end of last week, but we're back up into greed. Um, and that's probably because we're still seeing we're seeing uh, things go up um, as far as the S and P 500 goes. I'm looking back at this to see if it drops because I'm curious. Uh, let's jump into Europe. So um, again, normally this doesn't matter too much on a weekly video, but I'm looking at it because I know we're close to close because I'm late making the video. So Germany looks like they're going to close up, um, and that's the powerhouse of Europe. So I pay close attention to Germany for, you know, thinking about what might happen today. And then I think about the Cosby because the Cosby closes actually, um, I think, the, maybe even overlap Germany. So look at the Cosby, which is the Korean uh, comp uh, composite. Uh, you can see they had a nice night. The DAX, which is the German one we just were talking about, they basically followed it up higher, which led to our um, futures. If I can get this right. Oh my gosh, I just can't type today. Uh, bear with me. Sorry about that. Um, which now it does look like they're giving up the ghost a little bit. Here, let's look at the SPY. See if it, again, this is, these are five minute charts. So um, probably not the best to be talking about on a weekly, but yeah, I'm starting to see some nose bleeders here. Um, the MACD's curling. Again, this is a five minute, so you can't read a ton into it unless you're doing intraday stuff, which we don't talk a lot about on this uh, video anyway. Um, I do, 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 do. Okay. So let's talk about what is on the calendar this week. Well, we had factory orders this morning. Again, I was busy, so I didn't catch up on it. That might've had something to do with some of the price action. Uh, I, I don't consider it a major price market mover. If you look down in the corner here of the Econo day, Econo day, you can see if it's a red bubble, it's probably most important. Look at, they even made Jerome Powell's speeches in red. I don't think I've seen that before. Usually they're just black like this, <laughs> but they actually made them red because they moved the market. So tomorrow, Jerome Powell is Eastern time, by the way. Uh, Wednesday, Jerome Powell. Oh my God. And then we also have a lot of employment stuff, uh, jobless claims, ADP employment, uh, employment situation. So we're going to see, uh, I'm wondering if we see a big revision on the last uh, employment numbers because 
Remember how obnoxiously wrong they were? They estimated like 185,000 and it came in at like 500,000 jobs created. Um, I wonder if that gets revised down drastically. And I don't know, I'm just kind of wondering because I've seen that number especially revised significantly um, historically. We also have some stuff in here like jolts. Um, I think that's uh, that's probably the biggest that I'm going to be keeping my eye on. So, yeah. So let's get back into the charting, the fun stuff, right? We'll finish up quick here. So we're back into a daily. Uh, this That's the financial conditions we were talking about um, on a daily. Let's take a look at some of our yield curves, which are always fun if they don't scale right. Oh, <laughs> I'm in the wrong chart. I'm sorry. Let me put that back. Can't, I don't can't do it on the inverted chart. So I am going to have to do uh, where is my chart? Thank you for bearing with me here. Well, come on, buddy. Oh, I see where I was. I see my, I see the errors of my way. So let's look at the VIX real quick. Sorry about the delay. So um, VIX has been an interesting thing. I did see something to note about the VIX this weekend where I had a, a trader that I do trust say the actually the zero DTE thing everybody's talking about does not affect the VIX. So uh, again, do your own homework on that. But um, interestingly, the VIX has dropped under 20 again. So um, if it's truly not DTE related, um, the market isn't scared. Inverted year yields, nothing's really changed or gotten better. They're just longer, deeper on the tw uh, 10 minus two. Um, one other chart I like to look at is growth to value. So growth stocks had a good run up. Then it looked like value was going to take over. And I was a big believer in value, uh, earlier. Um, and not that it did, did terrible. Um, remember, this is a ratio. Um, but you can see uh, growth is picking up again. Uh, part of that is my guess has to do with, um, well, I shouldn't say that. I should probably jump right into yields and stuff. So um, treasuries, I'm sorry. So if you look at these treasuries, I mean, Wow, three month at 486. I mean, these are insane numbers how expensive these treasuries are getting. Uh, great if you got a, a high yield savings account. Not so great if you're looking at a mortgage. Now, this mortgage hasn't been updated because I'm seeing them go over 7% locally here in Wisconsin anyway. Um, oil is up. I will say, I think this is gasoline is up. Um, I know in the uh, northeastern Wisconsin, we went up 20 some cents just today alone. Um, smash mouth, which is semiconductors, is usually a good leading indicator. It looks like a bull flag to me there. So it's one of those weird situations where it seems to me that we have an environment where all the numbers say one thing, and then I go outside and look around, and I see them building houses everywhere. Everybody has a job. Money's getting thrown around like it's just can't stay in your wallet. So I don't know why that is, and I'm trying to figure it out, and I've heard some opinions that I don't, don't totally buy into. Some I do. That being said, that is the end of this video. Please like and subscribe um, if you find this content useful. I continually try to make it better. And uh, I appreciate you watching. So thank you kindly.